Bianca Renee today and today's video is long overdue which is how to take care of your curls or keep them safe while swimming in the pool or swimming in the ocean. Granted I'm making this video in 2020 where summer was basically canceled I think there's about 24 hours left of summer but if you happen to cross a body of water in the near future you're gonna be ready. If you're new here, welcome. I post new curly hair videos every single week. So if you have curly hair questions, there's a 99.9% .9 chance I have a video explaining exactly what you're worried about. So hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any more videos. So let's jump on into the tips before you jump on into the pool. My first tip is to get your hair wet before getting in the pool. I know it seems kind of strange to get your hair wet before getting it wet in the pool, but think of your hair like a sponge. When you put sponge in water, it's gonna soak it all up. And then it doesn't really have much room to absorb anything else because it's already full of water. So we kind of want our hair to be full of clean water from the shower. And then when we jump in the pool, the chlorine water doesn't really have too much room to fit because it's already full of clean water. So depending on where you are, you could just make sure to hop in the shower before you get in the pool, put your hair under the sink, or if you're already at someone else's house and it's kind of weird to use a shower, you could bring a bottle of water in the pool with you and then dunk your hair before submerging it in the water. Another thing you should do to add on to that water, because water will evaporate and dry eventually, is to add a leave-in conditioner. You could use a conditioner or a deep conditioner, but I would probably save your deep conditioner for after you go swimming. So maybe choose between a leave-in or a regular conditioner. A conditioner is also gonna do the same thing where it's going to fill your hair up with moisture so that there's not a lot of room for anything else to get in there. I would also recommend grabbing leave-in conditioners or regular conditioners that have different oils already in there because as we know, oil and water don't mix. So if it has hydrating, moisturizing, or sealing oils in there, it's gonna be a great pick for your conditioner. The third option of things you could apply to your hair, just straight up oils. You could use coconut oil, avocado oil, jojoba oil, almond oil. All of those oils are not only just going to not mix with the water, but they're also a natural SPF. So not only are you going to be protecting your hair from the water, you're also protecting it from the sun because the sun could also damage your hair. Now, if you haven't seen it, I have a full video about oils. There's moisturizing oils and there's sealing oils. Olive oil, coconut oil, and avocado oil are all moisturizing oils, meaning they are able to penetrate the hair shop because they're small enough to get in there. So that way, just like the water, it's gonna be in there versus the chlorine getting in there. But then you have Jamaican black castor oil, jojoba oil, and grapeseed oil. Those are three oils that are sealing oils. So they kind of sit on top of the hair, making hair look very shiny, but they aren't necessarily getting into the hair shaft. So those oils are gonna be sealing your hair so that the water can't get in. Now what does this sound like when something is blocking the moisture from coming in? Silicone. Yes, I know, but let's talk about it. The reason why I usually don't like using silicone is because it acts like a plastic type barrier that will not allow any moisture or nutrients into our hair. So in this instance where we want to keep something out, technically that's what silicone's really good at. Now I don't know if I can verbally tell you to use sil You can use sil ooh. You could kind of maybe use that one silicone product in the back of your cabinet in your bathroom to go swimming because it will keep out the water because it's like plastic. But there's also so many other ways to go about it. I'd much rather you use a natural oil that kind of works the same way versus a synthetic plasticky type silicone. But it is much harder to wash out a silicone versus a natural oil, which at least has some benefits to it. So those are all the things you could apply to your hair before getting in the pool. Water, a leave-in conditioner or a conditioner, or some essential oils. 
So now it's time to get in the pool. Let's discuss how cute you're trying to be. There's levels to getting in the pool. So if you're like my cue, I'm gonna go to the party, put my toes in the water and just hopefully nobody splashes me. Then you might wanna get a cute sun hat to protect your hair from the sun, maybe add some oil as like a SPF barrier. But the best thing you could do to protect your hair from the water is not get in. But that's no fun. We wanna live our best life. So let's actually get in the water. If you're gonna be in the water, you're doing somersaults, getting kind of crazy, it might be best to do a protective style. So that would mean putting your hair in a braid or two, doing a twist out, just kind of locking your hair in place so it's not just swimming around, getting all extra tangled. But if you are on a swim team or synchronized swimmer or just someone who's in water like 24 seven, you're basically a mermaid. I mean, it's gonna be tough because curly hair is a whole process in itself. Us curly haired people are fortunate enough to not have to wash our hair every day and our hair usually looks best on like day two or three. But you might not have that luxury if you're getting your hair wet every single day because of swimming. So obviously the best option would be to wear a swim cap. Or if you could put your hair in very thin small braids to where it could still fit under your swim cap would be even better. If you can get your hair wet, put a leave-in conditioner in and then put on your swim cap, also gonna be a great option if you absolutely have to get into the water all the time. For me, honestly, I usually just end up getting in the pool with my hair down because it looks cute. But then I just gotta be mentally prepared to detangle after. If I'm ever in a situation where I'm gonna be in the water a lot, like maybe on vacation, or I know I'm gonna be at someplace tropical, then I'll honestly just get my hair braided, like in box braids safest protective style you could do for constant swimming that's not like a professional thing where you have to wear a swim cap because it's not going to fit under your cap so now you've had your day in the pool let's talk about what to do when you get out of the pool the best thing to do is to immediately rinse off that chlorine if you're not home if you're at someone's house or there's like a shower at the beach at least just rinse out your hair just to get all the ocean and or chlorine off of your hair then I would keep a leave-in conditioner in your bag if you're not at home, and then just apply some more leave-in conditioner to your hair to get that moisture back in there as soon as possible. Then once you get home, if you aren't already, I'd hop in the shower and give it a nice good clean. This is where a lot of people might think like, oh, let me use my strong sulfate shampoo to get out this strong chlorine. But that's kind of like a lot of harshness on your curls because the chlorine is going to be very drying. Chlorine isn't good for straight, wavy, or curly hair, but curly hair is prone to need more moisture anyways. So if the chlorine is drying out your hair and then you get in the shower and you put a very stripping sulfate shampoo, like that's just, it's a lot. You're losing a lot of moisture. I would then stick to a clarifying sulfate free shampoo to still rid all of the chlorine, but not stripping your hair even more. So now let's talk about conditioner. In this instance, we might wanna either do a conditioner and a hair mask when we get out, or just skip the conditioner and go for the deep conditioner. You want a hair mask or deep conditioner that is very nutrient rich to really give your hair that moisture. If you didn't put your hair in a protective style, you're also gonna have some detangling to do. Yeah, especially if you have kids that are swimming and doing somersaults, their hair is probably getting super, super knotted. But fortunately, I found the best detangling brush of all time. This portion of today's video is sponsored by Be Hairful. I've made a whole video on this before that wasn't even sponsored, and I declared it my favorite brush for detangling because it just glides through your hair. Don't believe me, just watch. So let me get my conditioner. I apply it to one side at a time to separate my hair into two sections. Now this brush is so good that I could start at the bottom like I normally do, and you will see that the brush just goes right through. It doesn't snag, it doesn't pull, it just gets rid of all my tangles. Even though you should never do this, you even could start at the top of your head, pull down, and it just glides through. So I always say, if you have kids that don't wanna sit still and you need to get through their hair or you're just tired of detangling your own hair and as an adult, you gotta get this brush. So I'll make sure to link the Be Hairful brush in the description box. You also could use my promo code to save some money, but definitely check it out and let me know what you think. So now that our hair is completely detangled, we wanna leave in this conditioner for at least 20 minutes. So I'm gonna wrap it up, put it under a shower cap, and let it sit so my hair could soak it all up. 
If your hair is starting to feel damaged, you need to take things to the next level, then you might wanna use a protein treatment or Olaplex. You guys might've seen me talk about Olaplex on my Instagram story. If you're not following me, follow me right now. But this is an Olaplex hair perfecter. This is their number three, which is the only one that I use because it's one of the only ones that is silicone free. But this is a hair bonder. So it's supposed to repair and strengthen your hair for all hair types, not just curly. But what it does is it finds those broken hair strands and it bonds them back together. So I've seen plenty of success stories where people have really like straggly damaged hair and this is able to get their actual ringlets back. So if you guys want me to do a more in-depth video on Olaplex or have questions, leave a comment down below and let me know. So those are all the main easy common tips that you guys can keep in mind before you get into the pool. It's all about getting that moisture back into your hair, protecting it from the sun, protecting it from chlorine. So whether you have to wear a hat, put your hair in braids, or just really soak your hair in water, oils, or leave-in conditioners, it's gonna all help to keep your hair as healthy as possible. If you have any more tips on how you protect your curls while swimming or going to the beach, please leave a comment and share your tips. If you found this video helpful and you want more curly hair videos, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. I post new videos every week. You also can follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter at Ms. Bianca Renee. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching Bianca Renee today.